Hi, everyone. Thanks again for joining us for another episode of the Fentox podcast. On today's episode, we're featuring Mr. Brian Catlett. He is our business development and marketing manager, and he is really passionate about professional growth and development. Well, you and I are both committed and very excited when it comes to conversations that surround professional growth and development. You and I oversee those strategies within the firm. Um, So I would love to kick off the conversation first with what makes you so passionate about it in the first place? I'm energized by learning uh, myself and then sharing what I've learned with others who may also benefit from uh, those topics. I love seeing our attorneys grow and become uh, proficient at business development, at networking, at learning how to share their in-depth experience with potential clients. Um, That really just brightens my day when when we get to see the growth from our associates, our of counsels, and even our directors and turning into these business development professionals. I don't think Fenimore is different from too many organizations. I mean, I've seen a trend on a national level about major organizations investing in their people because ultimately, if we take care of our people, we're taking better care of our clients. So it seems like a win-win across the board. And we have certainly seen that within our firm. So talking about professional growth and development, I know Fenimore has two programs that we both oversee. Um, One is for our entry-level associates. And then another one is for our more advanced directors within the firm. Well, the question I'd like to start with is, what is the frequency of those programs? Just to give other listeners some ideas about how they could look to structure their programs. Sure. Our our director's program meets quarterly for about four hours. And through that time, we we bring in an individual that helps us plan out what they're going to do during between each meeting. Uh, We also provide in-depth insights into various topics, including how to take advantage of your contacts. Um, We also dive into specific opportunities that our attorneys might have during that time. We also do uh, regular follow-ups with the attorneys based on the topics that were discussed uh, during the in-person meetings. And this is really to ensure that that our our team stays committed and focused on the tasks that we've developed and we're working on. Our program for our associates and up counsel, they meet monthly for one hour over the lunch, over lunchtime. And we go through uh, commitment cards, which I know we're going to talk about a little bit later. And then we go into detail on a specific topic to help them uh, prepare for life as a director. Um, one of the best parts about these two programs is we have a quarterly lunch where we bring in a thought leader on a specific topic. It's over lunchtime, uh, and it's open to all current participants and alumni of the program. And that's just continuing education and it allows them to maintain what they know, refresh them, and give them additional skills for business development. And we talked a little bit more about the structure and what that looks like internally. But, you know, what I think would be most helpful for our listeners is just talking through what some of those topics are and perhaps providing them a couple tips and best practices. So are you up for the challenge, Brian? I am. Let's do this. Great. Well, there are a number of topics, but I thought we should cover five of them today. So first off, I would love to get just a couple of tips. We don't want to give them all of our hidden secrets, but I would love to get just a couple of tips from you as it relates to our number one first topic on business planning. I think the most important uh, part of business planning is to ensure you're doing SMART goals, which are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. Um, with with SMART goals, uh, they really help you focus on what you want to do and how you can get there. And it's not just a broad assumption of, I want to bring in new clients. You're, you're actually talking about, I want to, to get six meetings with, with, um, with potential clients. And you're going to do that within the first two months. Um, and then I also think the other most important part is to write them down and ensure that you review and revise them as necessary the percentage of success that you get from your goal setting when you write them down is 
so much better than just thinking about them and, and putting them in your head. So I think those are the two uh, tips I would give. I completely agree. I mean, just putting a pen to paper, having it in a written form, so that way you can track your progress towards goals, I think is always a winning strategy. Um, and I'm so thankful that a lot of our attorneys, you know, take that to heart and actually implement that themselves. Something else that I would offer, another one of my tips is, of course, we have our clients in mind who we want to, you know, try and work with over the course of the year. But I think something else that's just as important is also looking at who some of our multipliers are. Now, multipliers are those people that can also refer us the work. They're just as important. We need those champions, those cheerleaders out there in the community. So having an idea about who those people are, that helps you with structuring your week, your month, your quarters. So that way you're staying top of mind and in front of those individuals. All right. Well, let's move on to topic number two. This one is by far my favorite one. It's time and energy management. So Brian, what are some of your tips that relate to time and energy management? Because I know this is a topic we talk about all the time. Yeah, and, and working with you over the last couple of years and, you know, feeling the passion that you have for this, uh, two areas that I've really learned about that I, I wasn't aware of before is uh, delegate what you can. Um, ensure that you're working on projects that are really important to you and that give you high satisfaction. Um, when you're bogged down on some minutia and it can go to someone else, you can take better uh, value of your time and really apply it to those things that really matter. Um, and then I think one of the other issues is the ability to manage distractions and ensure that you're blocking time to focus on uh, the most important parts of your day and, and, you know, set time aside for responding to emails, but try to stay on task because when you get disrupted, um, it takes 15 minutes or so to get back to where you are, get back in the process, and you just lose all that good momentum that you're that you've created. I love all of your points. Um, my other ones that I would offer are something that you and I have both been working on. They're small moments of reflection, or those are also often referred to as s'mores. Um, some other people often call them joy breaks as well, but those are so important, especially as we're working in this virtual world. We're in front of the camera, we're on Zoom calls all day long, and we're having some, you know, very intense, sometimes stressful conversations. So don't burn yourself out. That would be my biggest advice. Make sure you break up your day with some of those joy breaks, some small moments of reflections as you transition between meeting to meeting, or even from your personal life to your professional life, or as you wrap up the day from your professional life to your personal life. So some great advice there. Um, but I know we could talk about time and energy management all day long. So uh, if anybody has any additional questions, call Brian. He's a great resource for that. <laughs> All right. So topic number three that I would like to cover is social media. I know we both work in marketing and business development, but we often help our attorneys with building their personal and professional brands. And a lot of times we're leveraging social media. So what tips do you have that surround social media, Brian? I think the most important is to be consistent. And that doesn't just involve regular posting, but it's also using similar styles or the same style throughout uh, it really helps build your personal brand that that people recognize as soon as they see it. Uh, you know, it, also one of the other areas that has been really beneficial and the, some of the highest viewer counts that I receive on LinkedIn and Twitter is a photo of me and a couple other people at a networking event um, or highlighting the firm at a seminar or charitable organization. And if you do that and tag the people that you're in the photo with, it greatly expands the audience that is going to see it. Um, the other thing is to use graphics, either photos, um, creating your own graphics. And this is, it seems daunting to create your own graphic, but in PowerPoint, it's actually pretty simple. And you can just save that as a PDF or a, a JPEG once you've created it. Um, and just upload it. And, and it's another eye-catching way for people to not just skim through it, but they're going to see it and be like, oh, that's great. And, and they're going to react to it. 
All those are really good. But this also makes me think about, well, what's your strategy that you have in place on a daily, a weekly basis as it relates to your social media? And one way you can do that, which is topic number four, is by creating your own personal marketing calendar. So as it relates to that, Brian, would love to get your thoughts. What additional tips do you have as it relates to creating your marketing calendar, whether that's related to social media, public relations, et cetera? Yeah, I, I think the most important is to block time for creative, for, for working on your personal marketing calendar um, and, and ensuring that you're doing it each and every week. Um, I think simple is also great. It, it's if you're if you know something's going on in the news or about ready to happen, I think that's a great way to plan out your week. You can talk about a new court decision that is popping up and how that is relevant to your practice, to your clients or your potential clients. Um, I also think doing small moments of non-work is also beneficial. Uh, our firm always highlights our um, special days of the week. You know, it's today's national or chocolate chip cookie day, and we're celebrating that through social media and internally with our, our team. And I think that's a great way to show that your personal side and ensure that everyone knows you know, you're not just a lawyer, you're not just a uh, marketing professional, but you're a human and, and you've got these other outside interests. I, I I love all your points that you made. And I think it's great that the firm continues to celebrate some of these national holidays because it's a good excuse just to touch base with a lot of our clients. Um, but with her calendars, I think something that's been helpful to note and something that's helped me with building my personal brand is, you know, finding rhythms and routines as it relates to that calendar. What are you going to do on Mondays? What are you going to do on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Maybe you're setting up your strategy for each week on over the weekend, or you spend Friday afternoons doing that. You know what works best for your calendar, but kind of having that structure in place helps you to hold yourself accountable and helps you to make progress towards those smart goals. Um, so that would be something if you put it on your calendar, you're far more likely to actually accomplish it. So, you know, creating that calendar ties back to time and energy management, as well as that business planning effort as well. All right. The last and final topic that I would love to cover today are presentation best practices. Brian, what tips do you have for us? I think the two P's are the most important, plan and prepare. Uh, ensure that you have enough time to create uh, the, the proper materials you need for your presentation. You know, at Finmore, we have a team that can help you create fantastic PowerPoints or graphics and handouts for the event. And I just think that's so important if you have it set up properly, the uh, good visuals will help increase the retention and enjoyment of the presentation. The other, the other part that I think is missed by a lot of people is to follow up after the presentation. Ensure that the, that, that the participants have received a copy of your PowerPoint, that they understand who you are and have your contact information. And if somebody asked questions throughout the practice or throughout your presentation, ensure you follow up with them because they, there's probably a need that they have, which is why they attended and which is why they asked the questions. So my last tips would be for those still working in a virtual setting, because I know there are quite a few of them out there, um, look at your lighting, your camera, and your audio. Those things are essential. So if you think you're going to be in front of the camera on a consistent basis doing some of these virtual presentations, I think investing in some of those small things that would really go a long way. So Brian, we go through these sessions in our professional development and training courses on a regular basis, but you know what happens with a lot of these presentations that I've seen out there in the community is that, you know, you hear all this great stuff, but then you're like, well, what do I do with it? And how do I implement it? So oftentimes it goes in one ear and out the other, and then they don't actually implement any of those best practices. So with Infinimore, we actually created a strategy about how to help hold ourselves accountable. And those are through commitment cards. So Brian, would you mind just sharing a little bit more about what questions we look to have everyone answer in their monthly commitment cards? Absolutely. One of the best for, and this is really helping to plan your week, is what are you committed to? Um, and, and that's not just um, individual tasks, but it's overall um, best practices that you want to achieve, whether it's being better at time and energy management. Is it uh, resting and recharging? Is it training yourself on um, a new topic that's out there? 
uh, and really, and it, and it can include the various tasks that you have to do throughout the week. But I think that's a very important part. Um, and then once again, with the SMART goals, when will you do it by the time, time bound? Ensure that you're doing it uh, when you say you're going to do it and so that you can move on to other tasks. We all have performance barriers, but to identify what they are each week helps you understand what can cause a hiccup throughout your, your, your time. And I think that's important so you can plan around it or understand what it's causing so that you can be successful. And then my favorite, a couple examples of what a performance barrier could possibly be. Yeah, I think uh, performance barriers are if someone on your team is going to be out for for a couple days, is your home life a little goofy because your kids are starting school or or your significant other is traveling? Um, Is it a software issue where you might not have the proper equipment to complete the task? Um, And I think that's understanding that really helps you be more successful throughout the the week or the month or whatever, however long your your commitment is. And then my favorite is how are you going to celebrate? You know, we all work so hard and are so dedicated um, during this time that you have to find time for yourself and ensure that you're celebrating your hard work and your successes throughout the week. Um, One of my favorites is uh, going for a hike or going out and having a really good uh, bottle of wine. Some of my strategies too that relate to celebrating success, it depends on what your week looks like. If you know it's gonna be a crazy week, uh, maybe breaking it down to smaller and more digestible pieces. So maybe you celebrate at the end of every day. Whew, you made it through the day, you got all the stuff done that you had to. Or you know, if it's a more normal structured week, then perhaps you find something to st- celebrate at the end of the week. My favorite one is going to grab a cup of coffee at one of my favorite restaurants. Maybe it's a mani pedi or hanging out with friends and family. But making sure that you do something and are, you know, more aware about prioritizing celebrating those successes, I think is key. So talking about celebrating successes, we've had a number of success stories in our programs within Fenimore. So would you mind just sharing a couple of your favorites with our audience? One of my favorites is from the first year we did the program with our directors. And one of the attorneys had met with, met a in-house counsel at a charitable event. She had developed a a relationship with this in-house attorney. And over the course of three years, it finally turned into a new client for the firm. And it's just the amount of dedication uh, that she had for this process and understanding that it doesn't happen overnight. Um, And people like to do work with people they know and like. So I thought that was fantastic for her. Um, And then I also love the creative ideas that we get for developing business. One of our attorneys had um, his his grandfather owned a dairy farm that he worked on. We pitched a uh, client that was in that kind of space. Um, And because of the photographs and videos we had in our presentation, it was helpful to to create a positive connection. The other one is uh, we do various holiday cards that we send out to connect with our clients and and just remind them we're here. And one of our attorneys did a special 4th of July card for her clients that had a photo of her family. And, you know, Phoenix, Las Vegas were were hot during the summer and hers was just simple and, you know, just dreaming of sweater weather and uh, just created a great personal connection with her and her clients. I know there's been a number of success stories and it always energizes me to hear about some of them. So we hear them, you know, thankfully on a daily, weekly basis, which is pretty awesome to see. So I know the impact has certainly been, you know, pretty large within the organization. So there probably are some organizations that are out there that are like, all right, it's time we finally start doing something like this. So for those organizations looking to implement professional growth and development within their organizations, what advice would you have for them? Yeah, I think uh, simplify the process. Uh, Business development, I don't think it's overly complicated, but if you have a a good process in place to train your um, attorneys, that will greatly assist them. I think you need to have a go-to source resource internally so that if they do have questions or need assistance, it's easy for them to get in contact with them. 
um, make the process enjoyable. It needs to be a little bit of fun and uh, so that so that they'll participate. It shouldn't be homework this and homework that. It needs to be a process where they can start to see results also. And then most importantly, I think you got to hold the team accountable. If they say that they're going to work on this, you need to ensure that they're there to assist you with that. And um, it seems lawyers are very deadline oriented. So if they know that they're supposed to do something by a certain time, it almost always gets done exactly how they say they're going to do it. And, and so I think the accountability factor um, helps them there. As far as the structure goes, some advice that I would offer to other um, business leaders is just making sure that you implement rhythms and routines. If it's more predictable, if there is a calendar issued for the entire year, that hurt, certainly helps individuals with prioritizing and planning it and putting it in their calendar. So I know for one of ours, the one for our associates, we do that on a monthly basis. We do it the last Friday of every single month. It's over the lunch hour. We bring in lunch. So they already, they already know what to expect. So the structure is always the same, but we just happen to have a different topic. So that would be one of my winning strategies for those tuning in for this episode. All right, Brian. Well, if there is one thing that listeners can take away from this conversation, what do you hope that they actually take away from this discussion as it relates to professional growth and development? I think, I think a little can go a long way if you do it correctly. Uh, Finwar has uh, has some great programs, our professional development for our attorneys. We also do a lot of stuff internally for our staff to ensure that they're getting um, advice on how to stay mentally healthy, um, to ensure you know diversity, equity, and inclusion is very important internally with our professional development. And I and, and our processes are very simple, but they're very effective. So I think if you do it right. Um, it doesn't have to be overly complex. The only other thing I would like to add is that professional growth and development is not a one size fits all. Not everyone is going to be into it. Not everybody is going to want to actively participate. So just another tip is that our structure for our professional growth and development programs are, it's an application based process. So it's those high achievers that are really committed to it in the first place. So that might be something else to take away. Um, also leveraging free resources on YouTube, my goodness, especially now in the digital era, there are so many different free resources out there, especially on YouTube, that I would encourage you to tap into. So if there are key topics that are popping up time and time again, maybe it's those presentation best practices, maybe it's um, time and energy management, whatever it is, you could probably find a video on YouTube that would be really helpful for your team members. So like you said, Brian, a little does go a long way. All right. Well, as we look to wrap up today's conversation, is there anything else that you'd like to leave our audience with? Just that, that Finnamore wanted to do more with our attorneys and our staff, and we did it, or we're doing it. I, I think that's really important for a firm to look at the needs of their team and ensure that they're getting the resources. And, and we, we want our people to grow, and we put the time, the energy, and the investment into that. I just think that's so important and, and so uh, makes me so happy to, be a, to work at Fenimore. All right. Well, thanks so much for taking the time and for joining us for today's episode of the Fun Talks podcast. <laughs>